Welcome. My name is Dave Schunk. I am the President and CEO of Volunteers of America Colorado. I'm so glad you are here with us today. We are sitting in the Volunteers of America Colorado mission, the last operating mission throughout all of Volunteers of America. It's an honor to be here today. And with me is my special guest, Diana Coons. Diana was our past president and CEO and also our official historian. Diana, it's so great to be with you here today. We are here to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Volunteers of America, founded by Ballington and Maud Booth. And this is our Founders Day, which was March 8, 1896, and this occurred at Cooper Union in New York City. Diana, can you give us a little background on Ballington and Maud Booth, our founders? I mean, after all, this is the power couple of the day, but yet there was an amazing love story as well. Maud and Ballington Booth, um, our founders were incredible. And from a very early age, they were both fully engaged in um, Christian work. Uh, one of the most interesting things is that Ballington Booth did his first worship service when he was 12 years old. When he was 17, he was one of the first Salvationists to be imprisoned because of the work. Maud, not far behind, although she was um, eight years his junior, she was involved very early also in the work of the Salvation Army. At 15, she joined the Salvation Army as a Salvationist, and at 17, she went with one of the Booth sisters on a crusade through Europe. They were both actually imprisoned as well. Um, her father was an Anglican minister and not really amused by this whole problem that occurred on behalf of his daughter. Can you shed some light, Diana, on what brought the Booths to found Volunteers of America as a new movement in 1896. I mean, perhaps it was a little bit of a rebellious streak in Ballington and Maud? Well, you know, Ballington was the second son of the old general, William Booth, and he had been sent along with Maud to America to take over the Salvation Army here. And they were wildly successful and were able to build uh, the network across the United States with thousands of donors and serving so many people. Then the old general decided to come to America and Canada to do kind of a tour of the hinterland. And he was really thrilled about the growth of the Salvation Army, but he was not too pleased with our booths. He felt they were way too Americanized. They both had become American citizens. He was kind of annoyed about the use of the flag and the uh, American Eagle on the logo and in the services. And uh, he wasn't too pleased at all with the dedication that the Booths had to America and Americans. March 8th, tell us a little bit about that date and about the gathering at Cooper Union in New York City. What was it like? I mean, I know you weren't there or anything, but what was it like? Well, some of my colleagues think I actually was there, <laughs> but I wasn't. But for the 100th anniversary of Volunteers of America, we all gathered in Cooper Union Hall. So I have a sense of what the hall looked like, and the same as it did then. At the day that this happened on March 8th, there were 3,000 people inside this hall, which is uh, pretty small, and there were 5,000 people outside trying to get in. So you can only imagine the excitement that was building there. And that was the opportunity that our booths had to introduce this new movement, which they, by their own um, literature, say they never intended to start a new organization. But many officers and soldiers withdrew with them and asked them to start a strictly American organization, democratic in its principles. So before this vast throng, um, I'm sure there was a lot of excitement going on. I like to picture them maybe in their Salvation Army uniforms, giving, um, the explanation to all of their followers, and then taking the, their stripes off and marching out into the night. So right after the founding, what did the Booths say and do, Diana? What, how did they let their fellow Americans know about Volunteers of America and the mission of the ministry? Well, I know it's hard for some people to believe, but there were paparazzi back then as well. And our Booths and the Booths from England were really the rock stars of their time. So they were very much in the public awareness. 
And so this break in the Salvation Army was very highly publicized across the United States. And when Ballington was asked about this new movement, of course he gave those very famous words, you know, we'll go wherever we're needed and do whatever work comes to hand. But he also explained that there was going to be no uh, unpleasantness with the Salvation Army. He said, the American, um, America is so vast, there are so many souls to save, there needs to be no unchristian like war warring. And so they set out. And so we had a base to operate from, and the, the Volunteer Gazette that was started almost immediately after our founding has interesting factoids about all the services that continue to be provided. And by Christmas of that year, tens of thousands of children were receiving presents, all kinds of meals were being served. So over the last 125 years, Volunteers of America has kept that mission going and only growing as we go. Diana, that was amazing. You're such a treasure. And I would be honored, I think we all would, if you would close us in prayer. It's my honor to give this prayer that is our prayer for our service of remembrance that we give each year. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother and sister who have departed this life. We thank you for giving them to us to know and to love companions on our earthly pilgrimage. We remember especially today, Bellington and Maud Booth. In Christ's name we pray, amen.